two. All right, so this video is going to be titled uh, Making Your First Insert with the Kid Ops and Box Cutter. Of course, we've talked about making several inserts already, but we'll just talk about making one more that was a bit of a favorite. So starting off with Box Cutter open, I'm just going to begin drawing a box, and then I'm going to press B to bevel. The reason my shape is transparent is because I pressed H in order to be in transparent mode, but I'm also in live mode, so I'll press L to turn that off because we don't need it. And even though this is a difference cut, we're going to press J and make that a union and press spacebar to apply that. And we're just going to do that again here, press J. And of course we could change our start to be joined by pressing control D and just going in a little mini helper to do that. But I, sometimes I just keep it on cut and then switch over to join pressing J. So now that we have our first part of the shape, we have this bit of overlap at the top, which has become a bit of an interest to me internally as far as wanting to get that solved and make it just a little bit smarter in how it solves this. But this is a, unfortunately the byproduct of Boolean. So we can just simply work a little bit smarter by tabbing into edit mode and scaling down the main cube. Because we have auto parent on, we can't scale it in object mode. But scaling in edit mode will give us a little bit more trim, ensuring the cuts work out. And then just looking at it from side view, we can just switch back over to cut. And this is normally why I'm always in cut. And we'll just draw a couple of cuts and cut that out. And from this point, I will want to use hard ops and actually shift click smart apply, which will make a duplicate, allowing us to just go in edit mode. And we're just going to select each of these points and just connect them with J to join. Old habits die hard. I know we recently added a new tool for this, but still working it into my workflow. We press Q, we'll go to clean mesh, which will get rid of all the degenerative points that are not needed. And we can press I and inset this, and we'll just grab this loop on the outside, press X to delete that. And with this, we could just press Q, add a solidify. And I like to actually press two on solidify, so it pushes it as much in as it does out, so I could visually see how much I'm about to cut in. And by selecting both and pressing Q, I could just choose difference from the Q menu. We'll look at this in top view, and we'll switch over to Ngon using the top bar. And we want to turn off cyclic, which will turn Ngon into a line panel cutting tool instead of drawing, um, you know, Ngon lines. So now we're just going to draw some panel lines and just work on our ribbing fractal. And with that, we have our piece cut in. The next thing I want to show is snapping dots, which you can enable under snapping right here. And with snapping dots on, we're going to switch on the circle. And if we hover over this, we see that we don't have any good jump off point here. So for that reason, more than likely, what we'll need to do is actually use the nearest jump off point available, which is this area, and then just shift to keep it live. And then we'll just move it over visually. But that is something else I ponder too, is how we can create additional jump off points with this system. And I'll just do a little bit of scaling, control A and apply to scale. And with edit mode selected, I mean with edit mode enabled, we're going to select this top face. And if we control click mark, it's going to perform bevel. And if we hover over mark, it'll tell you that, you know, control clicking will add a bevel. So because this is a bull shape, control clicking mark will actually do what's called a reverse bevel, which will push the face outwards instead of inwards, which would get us a uh, not very good looking result. I'm going to shift S and do my origin to selection here so I can just scale this freely. And one of the tools that we never talk about in box cutter, but it's good for these such cases is the BC dot BC underscore transform is the code name for it. And with this, we can actually duplicate this shape around and keep the Boolean connection. So this tool rarely used and definitely annoying if you leave it on too long, but definitely essential when you need it. And with that, we've duplicated this to the rest of these areas. We could also go ahead and select them and press control A and apply the scale. And then we'll just lower the bevel width of all of them together. And with that, we can turn off the transform because we don't need it. It's just gonna get in our way. So with this piece, the next thing I wanna show you is that we can, from this point, 
C sharpen and C sharpen is actually attached to the control click of sharpen. So if I use it, it will just apply all the modifiers and give us the applied shape, which will be handy for us going forward. But in addition to that, we may want to also clean up the cutter junk that we also created. So we could just delete it after we applied, it doesn't matter. But I just want to show that in the control tilde under bull options, you can enable remove cutters on C sharp or smart apply and I actually find that it's a little problematic with smart apply at this time. It needs to get a little bit smarter, but C sharp, it works just as intended because that's where it was built. So if we control click this, we can see that it applied the cutters, but it didn't reply the cutters of the cutters. And that's because reasons. So one day we'll be getting that checked into, but now that we have all our cutters gone, which we could have just removed the collection, not even go through this whole discussion, but we'll just select all of the boundary loop here and pressing Q to go in edit mode under curve extract. We see that basically control click will make a new selection out of this. So we control click it and now there's a new selection made out of the piece that we had selection uh, or the piece that we had selected. So I'm going to press select and we'll go under boundary loops and use boundary loop, which I have mapped to shift tilde. And we're just going to select the ends and we're just going to put an end on it. And at this point, what I want to do is go into face mode, select this top face, and we're going to set our origin to selection. And now that our origin is right there, we can actually make this object just a little bit higher by moving the face and we'll shade it as wire. So that way we now have kind of an enclosure built. So I'll select this shape select this shape and we'll press control P and just object keep transform. And if we press alt G, we've moved it back to its original start location where this object is nicely flushed with our origin set based off of this one. So from this point, we can transition into kit op. So the first thing I'll do is save. So I'll control click power save so we can name this insert example. And normally I wouldn't even save a file, but thanks to power save and a little pop up, it just makes it a little bit easier on me. Uh, of course you could just control S and save, but we like to keep things complicated around here. So I'm going to actually save this to the new demo folder, which is the folder that I've been making over the course of these videos. And we'll just choose to create insert and notice that we already have jumped into create insert. And once we mark this as a cutter, we are basically good to go. We can choose to save the insert. And we'll just call this um, that's a complicated enough name. And from here, we can just look at it in camera view. And this is what our render results going to look like. So in a future video, I plan to di diagnose, I mean, um, break apart the uh, render scene and we make it ours using hard ops. But for now, we're just going to embellish the render by slapping it with a few levels of blank material till we get one that we like and then give it a bevel just for the Instagram. And we may want to lower the amount of bevel just slightly looking at that corner up there. In fact, why is that corner so out of control? First, we'll get out of cycle so we can work. And we see this because of this geometry. So there is more than likely a little bit of fine tuning I can do to actually get even more optimized geometry uh, for what we're aiming to do here. But we'll just clean this up the old fashioned way. We'll put this one here, add a loop right here and just join all this just to get a very nice render out of our thumbnail. And I'll click sharpen to add a weight normal and it's literally game over. So now we can render our thumbnail and actually get a very nice result. So from here we can close our thumbnail scene and we're back in the file that we made the thing for in the first place. But let's say I wanted to go in and edit the insert itself just to make it more capable for a bevel in the future. So we'll just choose to edit that insert. We'll go into this file and let's just really analyze what we got here. So the main thing is that these pieces are not interconnecting. And with us in edit mode, we'll just press control K during the red box transition to blue. And we're just drawing and hitting space bar, just giving a little bit of uh, pressure relief to these areas. 
and finally here. So we'll just take these two edges, dissolve them for they are not needed. This edge also not needed. Uh, these skewed edges can cause a little bit of unneeded tension on geometry. So I opt to remove them. That box was a little off size, so we'll just move it over. We'll dissolve this stuff and this as well. And because it's extruded down, we can actually dissolve willy nilly and get away with things. However, this area will require replacement like so in order for us to actually clear that out. Just a little bit of edge 101 for you. We'll dissolve these as well because they're protected on the side via an extrusion. We can just get rid of edges willy nilly without issue. And if we tap back out, we see that we actually have a much better result that's capable for us to add a bevel to later if we were to bevel this insert. So I'll press control S, save it, and this insert is good to go. So I'm just going to control N and make a new file. And if we go in kit ops, we jump down to our new demo pack and we locate rib insert. We can just insert that on the mesh. And notice that even though I have an insert selected when I click the add insert button, it continues to add it to the target mesh. And just like that, you can create an easy ribbed insert using box cutter, hard ops, and kit ops. Two.